In this video of my series on atomic and electronic structure, I will teach you about condensed electron configurations, valence versus core electrons, and orbital energy diagrams. Here goes. So as you may imagine, stemming from what I taught you in some previous videos, writing out the full electron configuration can get tedious for elements that are further down on the periodic table. For example, bromine's full electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p5, which is really long. Fortunately, there is a shorthand or condensed way of writing electron configurations. Using this condensed approach, we just write in brackets the elemental symbol of the noble gas that comes just before the element in question. We then write the rest of the electron configuration after it. In bromine's case, the noble gas that precedes bromine is argon, whose electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Therefore, this part of bromine's electron configuration, I can just replace with the symbol for argon written in brackets. And then I keep the rest of the electron configuration over here to the right written after argon in brackets. We therefore can abbreviate bromine's configuration as argon in brackets, 4s2, 3d10, 4p5. This is much easier than writing the full configuration. And this is called bromine's condensed electron configuration. Now we move to another subject. Valence versus core electrons. So the vast majority of chemical reactions that you learn in general chemistry, almost all of them, involve the exchange or sharing of electrons, specifically of outer electrons. These outer electrons are called valence electrons. Valence electrons are different from core electrons. Valence electrons are the ones that are in the atom's outermost shell, while core electrons are the ones that are buried inside the inner shells. So you can quickly identify valence versus core electrons by looking at an element's electron configuration. For example, bromine's full electron configuration once again is this crazy looking stuff here. Its valence electrons are in its outermost shells, while its core electrons are in all of the inner shells. To show you that, I'm going to take this electron configuration and move it down here. Now, as I look at all of the principal quantum numbers here, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 3, and some 4s, I ask myself, which of those principal quantum numbers are the largest? In other words, which are the ones that represent shells that are the furthest away from the nucleus in bromine? Well, it's of course going to be this 4 and this 4. The 4 shell, the 4s and the 4p orbitals, are further out than all of the remaining electrons, including the 3ds. So these electrons right here are the valence electrons, because they're the outermost ones, the ones that are furthest from the nucleus. While all of the other electrons, these ones, as well as the Ds are all the core electrons for bromine. We can see then by adding two here to five that bromine has seven valence electrons. And that's what you'd typically predict looking at the periodic table because bromine is in column seven. In general then, if you look at an atom's electron configuration, it's electrons whose orbitals are the furthest away from its nucleus, that is the ones with the largest principal quantum number n, are that atom's valence electrons. These happen to be its highest energy electrons. That is the electrons that are in play during a chemical reaction with that element. Now all of the other electrons in the electron configuration, the ones in smaller energy shells, are core electrons. With that said, there is one type of exception. For elements that are in the D block, the D shell electrons are also valence electrons. For example, titanium has an electron configuration shown here. Now, based on what we did with bromine a moment ago, what we would do here is think that the 4s electrons, these two electrons in the 4s shell, are the valence electrons because they're in the highest quantum number, the 4 quantum number. However, because titanium is in the D block, the outermost D electrons, these two electrons in the D shell, also count as valence electrons. So these guys right here are all valence electrons, while all of the other ones before it are core electrons. Titanium then has four valence electrons. Now again, you only count the outermost D shell electrons as valence electrons for elements that are in the D block. For all the other elements like bromine that I showed you a moment ago, you count its D block electrons as core electrons, and you only count the outermost S and P electrons as its valence electrons. 
So again, this weird exception is only for elements that are in the D block. All of the others, we don't do that for. We now move on to another subject, atomic orbital energy diagrams. You're gonna love this. So as I mentioned in an earlier video, the larger an electron's principal quantum number n, the further away from its nucleus, the higher in energy and the more reactive it is. So we can draw diagrams that show the relative energies of the various atomic orbitals and their shells. In these diagrams called atomic orbital energy diagrams, each box represents an orbital. So the higher up the box is, the further the orbital is from an atom's nucleus, and the higher in energy the orbital is, and the more reactive the electrons in that orbital will be. So when we take one of these orbital energy diagrams, we fill it up each box with electrons, drawing an up arrow for electrons with a plus one half spin, and a down arrow for electrons with a minus one half spin. Let's take an example here of oxygen, which as we discussed in an earlier video, has an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. In order to draw out its orbital energy diagram, I start with the 1s shell, which has two electrons in it. I of course draw them here in this box representing the 1s shell. It's lower in energy because it's closer to the nucleus and hence less reactive. Now I go up to the higher in energy 2s shell. It has two electrons in it, indicated by the electron configuration part here, 2s2. So I put those two electrons into that box, one going up for a plus one half spin, the other going down for a minus one half spin. Now I go to my 2p shell. 2p shell, of course, has three boxes in it because there are three different kinds of p orbitals, a px, a py, and a pz. This p shell, of course, for oxygen has four electrons in it. So what I do is I fill up these boxes one at a time, and I do not pair the electrons until I absolutely have to. So I'll go ahead and draw one electron in this box, another in this box, and another in this box. Now, the fourth electron, of course, is going to have to go back in one of those shells, and now I'm going to have to pair it. And I'll, of course, give it a down spin, or a negative one half spin, so that these two electrons that are in the same 2p orbital will both have four different quantum numbers, the latter one being a plus one half or a minus one half spin, respectively. Now, you'll also notice, looking at all of this, that each d shell has five boxes because there are five different kinds or shapes of d orbitals, and each f shell has seven different boxes because there are seven different kinds or shapes of f orbitals. Make sense? Good. With that said, there are a few principles for these energy diagrams or rules that you need to know. The first one is the Aufbau principle. This principle states that electrons fill the lowest energy orbitals first, which you sort of saw we did in this energy diagram. We start at the bottom, we don't start in the middle, and we don't start at the top. We fill from the bottom first. Aufbau principle. The next principle is Hund's rule. Hund's rule says that we don't pair up electrons until we have to. Now, of course, we did that with our P-shell. I did not put any electrons in the same box until I had no choice. So electrons will actually do that in real life. They don't pair up in the same orbital until they don't have any other options. And the last rule is the Pauli exclusion principle, which states that no two electrons that are in the same atom can have the same four quantum numbers. In other words, no two electrons in the same atom can have the exact same address. Thus, if I put two electrons in the exact same box, one of them has to be up or have a plus one half spin, and the other has to be down having a minus one half spin. Thus, those two electrons can have the same first three quantum numbers, but their last quantum number, the spin number, is different, plus one half or minus one half. Those are the principles that you should remember.